fight on the beaches, we shall fight on the landing grounds, we shall fight in the fields and in the streets, we shall fight in the hills, we shall never surrender. The constitutional point of view was critical for Jefferson's support of the Bill of Rights. It's Saturday. Welcome to the Hayden Collins radio program, The Intelligence Syndicate. I'm your host, Hayden Collins. The Intelligence Syndicate. Uh, yes, yes, quite intelligent. Uh, some fun games this week. We've got Halloween right around the corner. First and foremost, keep an eye out for the wee ones. Different areas are holding Halloween on different days. Some of them are doing it on the weekend. Some of them are actually doing it on the actual day. Remember, if you keep your porch light on for most areas, that means come trick or treat with us. If you turn your porch light off and have your exterior lights off, that means we're out of candy. Make sure you have candy. If there's a rebellion going on in your neighborhood and you happen to see rioting children in masks, you know what happened. <laughs> and keep in mind, you get to keep this candy through the holidays, whatever you don't give away. And the little bowl on the coffee table in the living room for all the guests to come in and eat candy and whatever's left over, you know. <laughs> So, uh, so, so be ready, be ready for that. All right, so some Halloween politics. Ghouls, goblins, backstabbing, double trading, pirates, lost souls, and thieves. A few things foremost. Keep a very close eye on the economic structure because it's scary, not for the United States, but Europe. Germany is sending out warning signs. We're not growing. We have negative growth. We got problems. We cannot sustain. We are Germany. France is sending out economic warning signals that they are not going to be able to survive without Britain's money. And yes, Britain was giving France money. That was part of Brexit. <laughs> you see why Britain wants to get out now. <laughs> they just want to leave. And so the economic woes of Europe as it gets a little scarier and scarier presents a situation that mimics Portugal, Italy, Greece, and Spain, what they, they call pigs, P-I-G-S. Uh, those are the, and in fact, Spain doesn't even have a government still. They do not have a central government still. And the most amazing thing is their unemployment rate is dropping without government interference. It's absolutely amazing what free market is doing there. Uh, Hong Kong screaming for freedom still. Internal strife with China as much as they can strife. This is what happens when you turn in all your weapons. The government will come and take you. And that's what they're fighting. Look what's going on in Saudi Arabia and Southwest Asia. All of a sudden the drones are quiet. Uh, last week we talked a little bit about Syria, what's going on there. Lo and behold, look at this week. Wow, I feel good about myself. I almost like to say I called it. And we look at the economic structure of what's going on with China. Oh, and I tell you what, the, the press, I have to give the president kudos on this one. Boy, he called the tariff right with China for the American farmers. Man, did he call that shot right. Uh, look, look at what's going in. Well, the press is not going to cover it, but, you know, hello. That went well. Now, we look at the economic structure for what's going on, and let's look at the quiet areas, like the graveyards, because that's always the scariest part during Halloween. Greece is not boasting anything. Portugal has gone silent in their economic structure. Italy's gone silent in its economic structure. The austerity measures. Sorry, we haven't got it. You can't have it. Reminds me of Cold War Russia when they were passing out bread and when they ran out of bread. Sorry, you just got to starve. We're out of bread. The Finnish government is recovering from their downfall. 
because they are no longer offering a lot of things that they had offered prior to that. Uh, it looks like a majority of the, the free health care is gone because the government could not afford it anymore. A uh, majority of the public transportation that was not making money is gone. The government could not afford it anymore. Hmm. So some pretty scary stuff economically as we look at the, well, I guess we could say the prospectus. That's a good stock term around the world with what's going on. So uh, inside the United States, you, got, you have a lot of guys going, okay, we're doing really good. Our unemployment rate's really good. For the first time in the history of the state of Georgia, I think we're below 2%. That's give or, now understand, when you look at these things, keep in mind, it's plus or minus 3%, okay? That's what they told us during the Obama administration, it's plus or minus 3%. So if Georgia's unemployment rate is 2.8%, and that's plus or minus 3%, that means we could have a negative unemployment rate. They don't know. This is just kind of, kind of wicked, but... Uh, we, we look at the unemployment structure inside the United States. Jobs are really good. Uh, I'm hiring. I can't get enough people. You know, I mean, th that's what I'm running into. We don't have enough interns to cover the show because everybody has paying jobs. It's absolutely outstanding. It's like, holy moly, look at this. Now, there's a little bit of, hey, let's present some gloom and doom because keep in mind people make money off of gloom and doom in the stock market you know buy gold and you buy this gold coin that they charge you all the workmanship for the gold coin that's three times the cost of the gold you'd be better off just buying gold at a pawn shop okay you, you pay for the weight of the gold uh there you pay for the weight of the gold and we guarantee it's gold yeah it's gold all right and we got a little certificate saying it's gold but nobody cares if the world comes to an end if you're holding a certificate saying it's gold <laughs> what a racket that is so there are people in the industry that make money off of your fear of economic problems so keep that in mind so the united states structure for the economy is looking really really good but the world structure is not looking so good. So we're gonna break this down. It's gonna be scary, but we're gonna break it down. So think about this when the laws changed inside the United States and we allowed money to come back into the United States that was being held captive in other countries. Now I reviewed this a couple of weeks ago and I got some emails and I answered the emails, but I'm having to respond to this. So we're gonna cover this briefly, real brief, so we can get on to the point here. All of these countries that we had U.S. companies in that was part of that failed worldwide economy program they tried to kick off in the 90s, <laughs> it definitely failed. I guess it went about 15 years before people realized it wasn't going to work. But we had trapped money in other countries, so you have to make your money work for you wherever you are. So they were using U.S. dollars to work for them in these other countries. And in one way, the economic structure was... If the U.S. dollar is there, then they got to be friendly with the U.S. And if the U.S. dollar is dominant and our companies are dominant, then, you know, hey, what? You know, we're making business. They're U.S. friendly. We're not going to start wars. You don't start wars with your business partners. And so there was a lot of that philosophy going on, but obviously it didn't pan out. It didn't pan out well for the Chinese. They did some heavy investments around the world. They overinvested thinking that, you know, <laughs> heck, they own the airports in Poland, I think, or something like that, whatever. They did this whole investment program, and it's not working out for them either because this global economy thing that they believed in, that a lot of people believed in, absolutely failed. So we won't talk about the failure of the global economy. What we're going to talk about is money. So the tax laws changed under the Trump administration. All that money was allowed to come back to the United States. That's the long and short of it. So all of these companies that had money trapped overseas now could bring it back in the United States and make more money inside the United States. Keep in mind, businesses are in business to make a profit. They're not in business to be your community partner. They're not in business to go snowflake. They're not in, they are in business to make money. And for you uh, intellectuals out there, I hate to break it to you, universities are in business for the same thing. They're not in business to educate children. They're in business to make money. If you have any questions about this, check your local football team. If you have any questions about this, look at how much money your football coach makes. Okay? And then, and then go to your room where your English is being taught. Universities are in business to make money. Okay? Sorry to break that to you. 
Now, put yourself in the position economically around the world to where that US dollar is no longer available to you. You don't have that dollar handy because it's not trapped in your country anymore. In fact, not only is it not trapped in your country anymore, it's back in the United States and actually being put to use inside the United States. Now, for you, being a foreign country or a foreign business, that's bad news. And the reason that's bad news is now you're having to compete with a U.S. company with quality of goods, with a backed money stream exporting from the United States into your market that they don't have to pay the same socialist tax that you have to pay. Now, the value-added tax, whatever you want to call it that, whatever you want to call it, I call it socialist tax. Each country in Europe has their value-added tax. If you make a lawnmower in one country and they put the wheels on in another country, that adds to the machine. Then in the next country, they put on the gas tank, that adds to it, okay? And each time there's a modification, there's a tax for that addition. And it is a burden to the manufacturing industry over there, and it's also a burden to individuals who want to buy something because the cost keeps getting jacked up, jacked up, and jacked up. Now, all of a sudden, the U.S. lawnmower you can buy for 50 euros, but the European lawnmower you have to buy for 350 euros. Why? Because the value-added tax. So if you're the suave, you know, mainstream guy that wants to cut his yard and you want to do it the cheapest way possible just to get it done so you can go have your barbecue and, uh, you know, French snails, whatever, guess what? You're buying the cheap one. You're not buying the one with the value-added tax. So the European Union is losing money because they don't have those value-added taxes. They don't have those value-added programs that are bringing in tax funds anymore. So now you've got all kinds of European taxes that are not being paid because the sales aren't there and the American money's not there. But then you have all kinds of American money and all kinds of American funds hitting your market that don't have to play by the same rules. So effectively, the United States is undercutting your tax program and you can't do anything about it because that's the way the SOFA agreement was written. That's the way the trade agreement was written. We don't do value-added tax. When it comes to you, it comes to you as a complete product. There is no way to charge a value-added tax because you're not doing anything to it to make it a value-added tax. So their whole program of tax and tax and tax and tax, I, I bet you, I told you guys about the sex tax before. Yeah, a long time ago. <laughs> uh, Okay, let me review this. Okay, so we have to go back to the late 80s. Let's, let's mid late 80s, let's do it that way. Uh, in Germany, they produced German public television. That's all you got there, German public television. And of course you got Armed Forces TV and so on and so forth, but German public television. And the Burgermeisters, which are like the local governors, they're not mayors, they're, they're, they're local governor type guys, and then you have mayors and whatever, but I guess it depends on the size of the city. They got together and said, okay, we're paying a whole lot for this public broadcasting stuff, uh, we're not covering our costs, we're going to have to tax the public who's being entertained by this, we're going to call it an entertainment tax, so we can you know, get our money back to produce more you know, stuff for the public. So... <laughs> they said, all right, they got together and voted on it, said, we're going to hire a bunch of people. And at the time, keep in mind, in Germany at that time, when you hired somebody, you hired them for life. They had lifetime jobs. That was their job for life. Um, and you can, I mean, they're, okay. Yes, you can walk away from the job and you can get another one, whatever the case may be, but essentially you're there for life. So <laughs> being the good German citizens that they are, these tax collectors started going town to town and they'd knock on your door and say, all right, we need to count your televisions and radios, and you're going to be taxed on how many TVs and radios you have because you're being entertained by German public television and radio, so we got to charge you a tax. So that happened like once or twice before all the German guys caught on and said, okay, to hell with this. We're not going to do it. So they got rid of all their radios, and they got rid of all their TVs, and I guess by mid-90s, 97, 98, 99 in there, uh, they were all using the Internet. And the German tax failed because there was no TVs and no radios to go and tax. I mean, there was, but it was dramatically dropped. 
So they had to change the law and say, okay, we know you're being entertained in that house. We don't need to figure out how you're doing it anymore. We're changing the tax and we're gonna bill you on the square footage of your house for an entertainment tax. And the chairman people said, what? How do you know we're being entertained? What, what, you're charging us for sex? If I don't have a TV and radio, how are you charging me for public television? So that's how they got the word and called it the sex tax. That's, it was, and of course that failed later and everything fell apart and so on and so forth, but that's kind of history. The gist of this is, the, the, the gist of the tax program in the socialist environment is to keep the government going. You have to keep the government going and the government has expenditures that you will never see the end of. They just keep going and going and going. Otherwise it wouldn't be government. You know, here you go. This is the way it works. So picture this scary moment in the economy, and let's go back to the beginning now. Let's picture this scary moment in the economy, and you're a European country, you're not making money off your value-added tax, you don't have the money coming in from the United States you had before, unless it's foreign aid, okay? And you have to negotiate for foreign aid, and that's the way that works, that's just how it works, is that's how it works throughout history. Uh, <laughs> And you find yourself in a scenario that, okay, I can't keep these government programs going. Which one do I get rid of first? And you have to go back and explain to your public, uh, we got to start getting rid of some, you know, government programs here. Uh, this is going to be the first one that goes. And everybody gets all upset or everybody gets terribly mad because they can no longer afford what they said they were going to provide. Then you get to go to what's called austerity measures, like Greece is going through like Portugal is going through, like Spain's going through, like Italy's going through, like Finland is going through when they collapsed. Sorry, we can't provide that anymore. It was a bad program, we're broke. Okay, so now the public says, okay, well, if you're broke, you're not charging us that tax anymore because you were broke to begin with, you're broke now. So they're not charging those taxes anymore. So all of a sudden now there's a free market developing in these areas, specifically Spain. This has been over the past five years now. They've been two years without a government, but this has been over the past five years. Specifically in Spain, a very profitable capitalist economy is surfacing in Spain. And I'm telling you right now, if it keeps going the way it's going within the next 10 years, Spain is gonna become a stronghold in Europe for political gain and or capitalism when it comes to the economy because they are the ones that are winning in this. They, are the, they don't have a government. <laughs> they, they're not being held down by a government screaming value added tax. They're not being held down by a government going, give us money and we'll give you programs. Uh, it is off the scale over there. If I, happen to, if I do take this trip to Madrid, I will have a hands-on of what's going on and I'll have a way better story for you, but I'm talking to relatives in the area and it's, it's, in, it's incredible. Uh, in some areas, they're buying Coca-Cola cheaper there than I can get it here. That's our, oh, by the way, uh, just so you know, that's our standard. That's what we call our Coca-Cola standard. You, you have, <laughs> I, know, I know you're gonna laugh at this, but they used to call it bread basket, you know, bacon, eggs, and so on and so forth. But we call it the Coca-Cola standard. And what I do in these conversations with my friends in Germany and my friends in Spain and all over the world is how much does it cost you to get a Coca-Cola, a regular Coca-Cola, 12 ounce. And, you know, the, for the longest time it's been cheaper here than it's been there, so on and so forth. But now it's becoming competitive in Spain, okay? I pay 89 cents for my Coca-Cola here and basically they're paying, you know, 93 cents. It's really close. Now, of course, the exchange rate with the euro and yada, yada, yada. We're not going to play that game. But in Spain, they're being really quiet about it. They're being really shrewd about it. But the rest of the European Union is getting real nervous because the Spanish central government can't pay into anything because there's nothing to pay into. There are fees that are being collected because of the electronic sales that's kind of keeping things going. But all in all, there, there's a little underground competitive network going on that's generating a capitalist economy that's you know going bonkers. Now look at Poland though. I still think Poland is going to be the strongest economy after Germany fails. Notice I said after Germany fails. Not when Germany fails, after Germany fails. They, they, they've done in Italy. They didn't learn from Spain. They didn't learn from Greece. They didn't learn from Portugal. 
Uh, and then they, they found themselves in a position to where this program is going to fail and they can't get out of it. Yeah, what a mess. All right, that's it for today. We got the twins coming up next with their Halloween segment. Oops, I arted again. And then after that, oh, and I do have a uh, program note. We are being postponed for a football game the week after Halloween. We may not have a show out that week. We may just do a bye week and put the show out the following week. And the holidays are coming. Keep in mind, we do sponsors for the holidays uh, for charities and organizations that we go and visit. United Way, of course, and a few others. And we'll also be talking about them on the year. And we have two big roundtables coming up at two universities, and I won't tell you which ones so we don't have protest because we've had a really good time so far without protest. In the meantime, have a great Saturday. Be about it.